Okay. The uh, chapter 10 is introducing the alcohol, so starting chapter for alcohol. We have chapter 10 and chapter 11 that covers the topic of alcohols. Uh, for ch in chapter 10, we are going to look at the uh, functional group, physical property, naming of alcohols, and preparation for alcohols, which you have seen few of them already. And in chapter 11, it would be reactions of um, alcohols. Chapter 11 is actually part of organic 2. Um, curriculum. So, let's see how much we, we might be able to look at a couple of the reactions only. Alcohols, they could be primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohols. What makes alcohol to be primary alcohol? If the OH is attached to carbon, primary carbon, bonded to one carbon, uh, if the OH is attached to primary carbon, then your alcohol is going to be primary alcohol. So in order to find out if your alcohol is a primary alcohol, you have to determine what type of carbon is this. If this is a primary carbon, then this alcohol is going to be primary alcohol because the carbon that carries the OH is a primary. The carbon that carries the OH in this case is a secondary because what makes the carbon secondary? The two carbon-carbon bonds. So if the carbon is attached to two other carbon, it's going to be secondary carbon. And the alcohol is going to be secondary alcohol because OH is attached to secondary carbon. And last one, we have the tertiary alcohol. Example for tertiary alcohol, because this carbon is a tertiary carbon. And the OH is attached to tertiary carbon. It makes the alcohol to be tertiary alcohol. Aromatic alcohol or phenol, if you have a benzene ring, and if OH is attached to benzene ring, then the structure of molecule looks like this, and uh, the uh, name or the class of this compound is going to be phenol. So we have phenol, primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohol. The functional group for alcohol is OH. It's like starting with water, you replace one of the hydrogens with um, alkyl group. Nomenclature for alcohols. So again, nomenclature, all the IUPAC rules, all the steps is covered in Chapter 3. We're just adding functional group for different families. So far, uh, uh, out of the groups that you've learned, um, alkane, alkene, alkyne, and alkyl halide, alcohol has the highest priority. So when you are trying to name these compounds, you want to make sure that the main carbon chain includes the functional group of OH. So that even takes over or takes priority over the longest carbon chain. So you want to make sure that uh, your carbon chain includes the uh, includes OH. And it takes the priority, so you're going to number from the side that is closer to the OH group. So for this, for this uh, 2-butanol, you have to number from the side that is closer to um, functional group, to OH. You give location to, you give location to the alcohol functional group. You are going to um, start with the 4-carbon alkane name, butane. You drop the E and add OL. So you give location to the OH group. You drop the E and add OL. So your the name for the compound is going to be butanol. But 
cis-butanol could be one butanol or two butanol, you have to say which butanol you're talking about. So it's going to be two butanol. So you are using number to show the location for OH. Um, you are using dash to separate the number from the letter. You are giving family name, which we, for this compound, the family name is all. So butanol, propanol, or pentanol. Um, for this compound, it doesn't matter which way you go, uh, you start from either one of these methyl groups to number it. Um, OH is going to be on carbon number two, so it's going to be one, two, um, three, or one, two, three, because it doesn't matter which way to number it, so you can pick any direction to number it. And the uh, OH group is on carbon number two, you also have a methyl group that did not take the number. So methyl group in this case is going to count as a branch. You always bring the name of the branch first. If you have more than one branch, you bring the name of branches first with the location in alphabetic order. The last part of the molecule is going to be the name for main carbon chain. And your main carbon cha chain should include the um, functional group. So 2-propanol propanol is actually the name of the main carbon chain that you have here and the 2-methyl is going to be is the branch that is attached to 2-propanol. If you have more than one functional group, if you have more than one functional group you have to look for priority you have alkene functional group and you have alcohol functional group. Because OH takes the priority, you are numbering from the side that is closer to the OH group, OH functional group. You give the location to each, um, al each of the functional groups and the total number of carbons that you have in the main carbon chain. So your main carbon chain is going to have two functional group, which is a 4 pentene 2 ol um, OH, or all takes the priority. And um, that's why the numbering starts from, from the uh, right side in this case. And also, the uh, all is showing that all is the uh, main carbon chain, so, or, so it all comes last. So when you write 4 in 2 all, that means uh, OH takes priority over alkene. Alcohol takes priority over alkene. <clears throat> you don't say 2 all, 4 in, because when you say 4 in last, that means that priority goes to 4 in. Uh, this priority list re recorded somewhere in your book. If it doesn't have the list in the back cover of the book, sometimes it does, um, is going to help you for organic one and mainly organic two because you have not learned about the acids, esters, aldehydes, ketones, and all that yet. But that's the, the priority, priority list. We already know that halides just comes right after the um, right after alkane, so you get the alkyl halide. Between the alkane and alkyl halide, um, alkyl halide doesn't take halide doesn't even take the priority over the long carbon chain, so it doesn't have a very high priority. Um, it is a very versatile group because you could make them go through a lot of reactions, but when naming. Um, halide does not take priority over the carbon chain. Then you have your ethers, so alkane. Um, so ether can be named as a branch. It is named as a branch, and you learn that after um, the in chapter 11, um, also chapter 14 in some books. Alkane, alkyn, alkene. This might be you know, easy to forget, but you've seen it in organic one. You've seen it in the previous chapter that 
alkene takes priority over alkyne um, because alkene you had the the is this is kind of exceptions okay then you have your amines okay i have to go back to the abutanol are you talking about this example yes okay i, I explained that example okay So we have the um, carboxylic acid takes the highest priority because for carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid functional group must be on the first carbon or the last carbon. You cannot have carboxylic acid priority on carbon two. That's why between ester and carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid takes the priority, okay? Uh, carboxylic acid. Between aldehydes and ketones, aldehyde is always on carbon one but ketone could be on carbon two and any other carbon. So that's why uh, aldehyde takes priority over ketone. So there are some, some explanation why acid takes over priority over ester and aldehyde takes priority over ketone. And then, uh, and then alcohol takes priority over. So anything that has oxygen, oxygen containing compound, in general, they have higher priority. So if you look at alcohol, it has OH as a functional group. So it's just single bond oxygen. And then aldehydes and ketones is double bond to oxygen. Esters and carboxylic acid, they have three bonds to oxygen. So you see the more number of, more number of oxygen bond or carbon-oxygen bond, the higher the priority. Basically, your carbon is more oxidized. More oxidized carbon takes the um, takes the uh, priority. So that list is very important for you to know which one, when, when you have more than one functional group, which one takes the, um, takes the priority. Now, if OH faces uh, higher priority groups, like ketone, aldehyde, ester, or, or um, carboxylic acid, then you don't name the compound as alcohol. You name your compound as carboxylic acid, in this case, or you name your compound as ester. So if OH is part of a higher priority class, then it's named as hydroxy. So you would just name as a branch hydroxy, just chloro, like a bromo. Um, so in is not like even hydroxide because it's molecular compound. So it's going to be named as hydroxy. So if OH faces high priority because it, these, these high priorities, they have higher um, oxidation number. The carbon has much higher oxidation number. Then you are going to name the compound with the highest priority functional group and you give the name of hydroxy to the OH. So the hydroxy in this case is named as uh, branch, but you cannot name CC double bond as branch. CC double bond, how would you name that as a branch? Because you cannot name it as a branch, even though the OH has priority, you have to kind of bring these two functional group and just give location. But hydroxy can be named as branch. Like amine, amine uh, NH2, if it's attached, if it's facing, if, if that is the major functional group, this is just example that does not apply here, is the last chapter of organic two. So this is like butanamine is functional group, but if this is attached to aldehyde functional group, then this is going to be amino as a branch, but you cannot give uh, alkene a branch name. So you can't give alkene a branch name. You have to bring both of them, if that makes sense. If they uh, did they answer your question? Why OH is not like a all? Here we don't have the al the, the 
branch name for alkene. So we have to bring the in as the branch name for alkene. Okay? So basically we are using in as the branch name with the location. But we have a branch name for OH and the branch name for OH is a hydroxy group. Did I answer your question? Okay. Perfect. So if you have the OH group and you have a bromo, you have metal group here. Um, naming the compound is going to be okay. What? How many carbons you have in the major car main carbon chain? How many carbons on main carbon chain? Six. Are you sure it's six? So you're going to, which one is number one? Uh, is this the carbon one if you have six? If you say six carbon, that means you are using this route. Okay? If you say main carbon chain has six carbon, that means you are using this route. And if you use that route, that means you are leaving the OH out. And you cannot leave the OH out. This is the alcohol. And the highest priority functional group, it goes to the OH. So you cannot say um, six. You cannot give six carbon to the main carbon chain because then you left out the OH. So main carbon chain actually has five carbon chain. And with the five carbon chain, um, so you are going to start with the carbon closest to the OH as carbon one, two, three, four. You could go up or go straight. It doesn't matter because the length of the carbon is going to be the same and you have one branch that is going to be added. Anything that did not take number uh, is going to be named as a branch. So you have an ethyl, you have a bromo, and you have methyl. Uh, two ethyl, three bromo, and okay. so you write the name in alphabetic order. That is going to be three bromo, two ethyl, Four methyl, one pentanol, okay. one pentanol. So this is part of the methyl group. Any questions? No questions? Okay, another example. It's the name for this compound. How many carbon you have in the main carbon chain? Two. Very good. Two carbon in the main carbon chain. You cannot mix match. You cannot mix the uh, cyclic system with the open chain. When it comes to aromatic versus alcohol, alcohol has higher priority compared to aromatics. So you, you have to make sure your main carbon chain include the alcohol functional group. And you're going to number it from the side that is closer to the OH. So it's going to be one and two. 
Now, what is attached to carbon number two? It's the branch. You name it as a branch. So it's going to be two phenyl. Benzene ring, when it changes to branch, is called phenyl, 2-phenyl, and this is 1-ethanol. 2-phenyl, 1-ethanol. Okay. 2-phenyl, 1-ethanol. Any questions? Just another example. In this case, OH is uh, less priority than carboxylic acid because carboxylic acid was the king of the list right was that had the highest priority so we number it from the side that is closer to carboxylic acid one two three and four uh, carboxylic acid high priority oh would be named as a branch so we have three hydroxy and this is going to be but Butane, you drop the E at oic acid. So it's going to be 3 hydroxy butanoic acid. Do I have to say uh, that oic acid is on carbon 1? Is understood. Oic acid cannot be on carbon number 2 because if it's on carbon number 2, let's say, um, going to write different colors. So let's say you have this then that gives one, two, three, four, five bond to the carbon. So it's not going to happen. You cannot have carboxylic acid in carbon number other than carbon one. You could have one on each end, which you learn that later, but you cannot have uh, in the in the any other carbon than other than the first carbon or the last carbon. So you could have something like this, okay, which you know, one on each end, but you cannot have in the middle. So you don't have to say one butanic acid. It's understood that it's going to be one butanic acid. Um, common names, if you know the name of the branch that it carries the OH, then you could just name the branch and say alcohol. So isobutyl alcohol, propyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol so if you have two carbon oh this is going to be ethyl alcohol ethyl alcohol or sec butyl alcohol sec butyl alcohol that means you have oh attached to sec butyl group so basically that's the branch that is sec butyl uh, carbon from uh, four carbon chain OH is on carbon number two, that is the, or group is on, uh, functional groups on carbon number two. This branch is going to be named as sec butyl and then alcohol. If you have two OH group, it's going to be named as a diol, so you just have to give the location. Is it going to be on which carbon it's, it's attached to, which carbon? If it's a 1,6 diol, 1,3 diol, 1,2 diol, and um, if it's a 1,2-diol, it also has the name of glycol. So if it's like a vicinal diols, vicinal diols, they are also called as glycol. Ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol is the, the commercial name for it is an antifreeze. It has very high boiling point, and that's why it's used for like especially up north to prevent from freezing of the water in the car radiator, they add antifreeze because antifreeze has very low boiling point and it has a very low uh, freezing point and very high uh, boiling point. So in summer days in hot states, 
they use the anti uh, antifreeze to prevent boiling of the water also in the radiator so um, they add the antifreeze so antifreeze why why does it have very high boiling point because that's basically my point why ethylene glycol has very high you have two h bonds per molecule you have two h group and that gives two chance for hydrogen bonding and that makes it much stronger so it basically doubles the uh, intermolecular forces okay so if you have two OH group you would name your compound as di O if you have a um, aromatic alcohol this is different from the phenyl group that we are adding that's phenol phenol um, so basically phenyl group is a benzene ring that is attached to something else so that is phenyl phenyl group um, so this is attached to main carbon chain then you have phenol which is the benzene ring that carries OH this is aromatic alcohol that's the the main carbon chain here is aromatic ring attached to OH so that's what you have the name for it is phenol you will learn this in organic too also that this is called benzyl so basically this group is attached to something else it's called benzene. Uh, benzene group. Okay, so if we have phenol, then everything else becomes a brand the aromatic ring. Um, phenol, just like cyclic compound, the main carbon chain or the main functional group takes carbon number one, and then you have to go clockwise to give carbon three to the to the next branch so it would be two three four uh, five six okay so if you say three chlorophenol it's understood that phenol is on carbon number OH is on carbon number one so you don't have to say three chloro one phenol the three that you're saying is with respect to phenol functional group which is the OH attached to the benzene ring uh, chlorine falls on carbon number three, so three chloro uh, phenol. Um, this is extra information because you are going to learn that in the in uh, organic two, and that is ortho. Ortho, if the branches are one and two position, and then you have one three position is a meta, and one four position is going to be para. So this two is a one four, and if it's a one four, you could say para, okay, para methyl uh, phenol, or four methyl phenol. If you know only the four methyl phenol, you're fine for now. You don't need to know the common name for them at this point. We'll go on. And how many carbons? Actually, the, the solution is down here. It's very similar to the example that I had it before for you. You cannot go straight to have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six carbon. You have to go up in this case uh, to make sure that OH is part of the main carbon chain. And you number it from the side that is closer to the OH and you move up to a higher number. Anything did not take. Um, anything that did not take a number at this point is going to be branch. So you do have an isopropyl group here. You have an isopropyl, and then you also have a CH2I that is a uh, is a is not a simple methyl group, but it's the methyl group that carries the iodine. So it would be iodo methyl. So. On carbon number three, you have iodometyl. On carbon number two, you have a isopropyl. And carbon one is alcohol. So it's going to be one, um, one pentanol. Okay. Pentane one ol or one pentanol, both of them are correct. Remember, we had the old and new IUPAC naming. So you could say the pentane. One all, or you could say 
uh, one pentanol is the same thing. Any questions about this naming? Because you have the answer already. I didn't write it down. Questions? Physical property. Uh, boiling point. Alcohols, they have unusually high boiling point compared to the same number of carbon of alkane, alkene, alkyne, alkyl halides. These, they have much higher boiling point. And the boiling point is um, due to intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces that we have for alcohol because of the OH bond is hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is going to give a specific property to alcohol. One is going to be, is going to have higher boiling point due to the hydrogen bonding. Second, solubility of the alcohol in water. Uh, hydrocarbons that we have learned so far about the uh, the groups that we learned so far alkane alkene alkyne and alkyl halides they do not dissolve in water even if they have one carbon so if you have like a ch4 it doesn't dissolve in water ethane doesn't dissolve in water uh, acetylene doesn't dissolve in water but alcohols they dissolve in water because of the OH bonding. Uh, comparison of these numbers with the same molar mass, 46, 46, and almost there, 44. Boiling point for alkane, minus 42. For ether is minus 25 boiling point. And for alcohol is 78, and that's because of the hydrogen bonding. Ether, even though it has oxygen, it has same molecular formula as ethanol. Basically, you have two carbons, six hydrogen, and uh, one oxygen for both of them. But arrangement is in a way that for diethyl, dimethyl ether, there is no OH bond. If there is no OH bond, there is no hydrogen bonding. And since there is no hydrogen bonding, boiling point is much lower compared to the same molecular weight, same molecular formula, but different functional group. So alcohols that they have less than five carbon, they are going to dissolve in, in water. So Methyl alcohol dissolves, ethyl alcohol, propyl and butyl alcohol, they dissolve in water. And as you increase the number of carbons, as you increase the number of uh, carbon, five, six, seven, and more, then solubility is going to significantly decrease. Why solubility is decreasing? Because the structure formula for alcohol, it shows that you have a polar head, which is where you have the OH group, and then you have a hydrocarbon that is nonpolar. The polar head of this molecule is uh, hydrophilic. It dissolves in water. The polar nonpolar tail is hydrophobic or because it's nonpolar because you have basically alkane here, is nonpolar, so it's hydrophobic. Now, it depends on how significant is the nonpolar tail over the polar head. And by the experience, or when you test for solubility, you see if it's one carbon, two carbon, three or four carbon, it dissolves in water, but anything higher than four carbon, the solubility significantly uh, drops and the greater the number then is going to be less solid unless you have a molecule that you have like 2OH if you have a molecule that is you have 2OH this is going to definitely dissolve because this looks like or acts like ethanol because for every two carbon you have one OH every two carbon you have one OH so it's going to increase the solubility if you have greater number of OH attached to main carbon chain. So high boiling point and solubility in, uh, in water. 
Do you have any questions? No questions? Okay. Are you sure you have no question? At least say you have no questions if you are. No questions? Okay. okay. Uh, commercially important alcohols, methanol, and then we have ethanol. Methanol is known as the wood alcohol. It can um, for, it can be produced from the from the gas uh, commercially, but it, it would be used as solvent. A toxic dose of that is 100 milliliter. Basically, is the lethal uh, LD50 value is 100 is uh, used as a fuel and it can be as a fire extinguished with water it has a high octane rating what does all of these mean low emissions uh, lower energy content invisible flame okay Invisible flame is just a cool thing that could happen. Um, so we don't, or sometimes it's dangerous that actually there is a fire and you don't see it. Uh, the energy content is low. That means it's going to produce less energy. But still, if it, if it has high octane rating, that means, uh, and it also has low emissions, it, it would be good for fuel in the car because it the combustion of the of this compound is much easier than let's say um, gasoline itself the mixture of the al alkanes so it's going to that's why it's used as a fuel in some states okay the uh, toxic dosage methanol is toxic you cannot drink methanol the only edible alcohol is ethanol and it doesn't matter what type of alcohol you're talking about the alcohol content of wine from vodka whiskey anything uh, rum anything that you name it the et the alcohol content is all the same it's just ethanol the difference is that how did they make it? Did they make by fermentation of rice? Uh, so they get like whiskey or potatoes, they get like vodka or... So it depends on how they make it. Um, the... Uh, by fermentation, yeast is used and the yeast that is going to... the yeast is going to die when the concentration reaches to 15% max, then they have to do distillation to make sure to to get this to do distillation in order to get high concentration of the of the alcohol. Now, why methanol is toxic and ethanol is edible? That is it goes back to uh, digestions like in the body or oxidation of this in the body methanol is going to give you uh, after oxidation is going to give you formic acid ethanol is going to give you acidic acid so methanol formic acid is the same formula that you see a fire ants when they bite you they actually inject formic acid and if enough number of them they bite you at the same time it can cause actually death 
because this compound is very toxic in body. So that's why methanol is more toxic. It's toxic, not edible, but ethanol, it gives you, after oxidation, uh, it gives you acetic acid. Acetic acid is the same thing as vinegar, or the vinegar is the same thing as acetic acid, but low concentration. So it still is, is edible and is not, is not toxic. So methanol, it comes from wood alcohol, and sometimes in making wine from grape, if they don't take the stems out, it can cause enough of the enough of the methanol. It can produce enough of the methanol that can cause like blindness. Unfortunately, there are so many incidents every year, and in people that they are making their own wine and they get the they suffer. It causes blindness as lower concentration, at higher concentration, it causes death. If you are intoxicated with methanol, they rush you to hospital and they give you enough of the ethanol, sometimes by IV, in order to replace this with the, with the uh, toxic formic acid compounds derivative of that because then this is going to derivatize and it gives you more toxic compound and then you can replace that with the ethanol content. Anyway, uh, azotrope, what is azotrope? Is 95%. Azotrope, uh, meaning that even when you do distillation, you cannot get more pure than 95% ethanol. So. Denatured alcohol used as the uh, solvent, so that's another use for this alcohol. Gasohol, a 10% ethanol in gasoline. They just add add ethanol to increase the emission, the the octate rating or better uh, combustion reaction. Toxic dose is 200 milliliters. Means. You know, when you say toxic dose, like LD50, uh, LD50 is the lethal dosage for 50% of population. If you have 100 people taking 200 milliliters of ethanol straight, it can cause death to 50 people. So that's what the, the 200 is coming. It's not the same for everybody but an average 50% of population would have severe reaction or death for 200 milliliters. Acidity of the al uh, alcohols. Do you think alcohols are acidic? Are they strong acid? No. Because if they were strong acid, you wouldn't be able to drink them, right? So alcohols, they are not the strong acids. They, the acidity, it's uh, similar to water or within that range. So acidity decreases as you have greater number of carbon attached to it because then it gets more nonpolar. Uh, halogens, electron withdrawing group, they always increase the acidity. So if you have alcohol that has pKa of, uh, let's say, 15.9, you add a chlorine here, it's going to drop to like 12, 13. It's going to be, uh, it's going to, or 14, because it's just one and it's just one carbon away. It's not right on this carbon. So it's going to drop the pKa. That means it's going to make it a stronger acid. Acidity is like how uh, good hydrogen can be released. If this compound can release hydrogen better than this compound, that means compound A is more acidic than compound B because it can release hydrogen better. So if you have electron withdrawing groups here, then it's not going to give electron to this carbon. 
this carbon is going to pull most of its electron from the uh, the oxygen because before it was pulling electron from oxygen. Uh, I'm sorry, oxygen was pulling electron from this carbon, and then this was giving electron to this carbon, so it can it could have support the electrons of the oxygen indirectly. In this case, the oxygen is pulling electron from the from the carbon. Yes, lower pKa stronger acid. pKa, the trend in pKa is just like pH. Lower pKa, strong acid. Lower pH, strong acid. So when we have a positive charge here, so it's not going to support this carbon. So the electro, some of the electron is going to be withdrawn from the hydrogen or more electron would be for, withdrawn from this hydrogen because it's losing this support and is pulling electron away from this carbon. So electron withdrawing group is going to make hydrogen to leave better. And when hydrogen leaves, it has to leave as H plus to act as an acid. So if you have something, any group that is pulling more electron away from the hydrogen, then hydrogen is going to be released as H plus more easily. That's why it's going to act as better acid. That's one, one of the uh, justification. And then the leftover group also needs to be more stable, uh, which comes with the resonance. So the acidity is very similar to water. But when it comes to phenol, which is the aromatic alcohol, phenol is much stronger acid compared to cyclohexanol you see a big drop 18 to 10 pka this is like 100 million times basically more acidic than uh, than cyclohexanol and i'm going to explain why um, but some of the other examples of inorganic or other strong acids um, like water and then you have acidic acid is stronger than, of course, uh, alcohol. And then HCl, that's inorganic acid, is not even comparable. So when you look at the cyclohexanol, after it loses hydrogen, it becomes alkoxide. And alkoxide, this compound, can this intermediate or conjugate base, can this form any resonances? The, this one, A, can it form any resonance? Do we have any pi bond to form a resonance? In order to form resonance, you might have, like, you have a charge here, and then you must have a, a charge or you must have a pi bond close by for it to form the resonance. If you had a pi bond here, it would form resonance. So basically, this would come in and the pi bond would move. But since there, this all sigma one is attached to all sigma one, there would be no resonance here. So there is no resonance for this compound, for this conjugate base. But if you look at the phenoxide, when you say alkoxide is the general formula, is the alcohol which has lost hydrogen. So this is a general formula for alkoxide, and a specific name is methoxide. If you have a CH3, CH2O minus, this is ethoxide, but general name for all of these is alkoxide. Alkoxide means that it was alcohol, but has lost hydrogen. The conjugate base to alcohol is going to be named generally alkoxide. Alkoxide, in general, they are very strong base because they are coming from very weak acid. So you, you are going to learn more and more about alkoxide because alkoxide, they are used as a strong base. And they are used as a strong base for elimination. They are used as a nucleophile also. So you have seen them before. But I'm glad you asked the question. When you say alkoxide, it could be any uh, 
carbon length um, the, with the oxygen with the negative charge. So when there is a carbon oxygen with the negative charge, that is in general classified as alkoxide. If you add hydrogen to alkoxide, it becomes alcohol. So you can make alkoxide to alcohol by protonation. It's strong enough to remove H plus from water, or if you bring it H plus as an acid, it just is much easier. It's going to grab it and becomes alcohol. So because it doesn't have any resonance, the, the conjugate base, the, your conjugate base is not stable. When phenol loses hydrogen, it becomes phenoxide. Phenoxide can form resonances because the pair of unshared electron can drop in. And then this is going to move up, negative charge here. And then it can drop in. This moves up, negative charge. And so. So you get like four different structure for phenoxide, resonance structure for phenoxide, just by moving pi bond and the negative charge. So the more resonances means what? Greater number of resonances means stability, more stable. So the more stable the conjugate base is, it means it can lose the hydrogen easier. If it can lose the hydrogen easier, it means it's more acidic. So it's going to be more acidic if it can lose the hydrogen better. Under what condition it can lose the hydrogen better? Uh, under condition that the conjugate base that is coming up uh, as a result is more stable. So comparing these two, cyclohexanol, pKa of 18, phenol, uh, pKa of 10. Phenol is a much stronger acid compared to cyclohexanol. Now, what else you need to know about the strong and weak acids? If you have a strong acid, the stronger the acid is, the base that you are using in acid-base reaction doesn't have to be too strong. But if the acid is very weak, then you have to use very, very strong base to react with this. So in acid-base reaction, I'm just repeating this. In acid-base reaction, you have to look at the strength of the acid in order to bring a base. If the acid is very weak acid, then your base that you are using, it must be very strong or super strong base. If the acid is a strong, then the base that you are bringing in doesn't have to be super strong. It must be strong base. Like this is not like a HCl. It's not like H2SO4, but it's more acidic than the top compound. Comparing the, the two compounds, this one is more acidic. But the comparing the base that you are using to make it react with phenol, the base reacting with phenol, it can be weaker than the base reacting with cyclo. Hexanol. Can ethanol react with sodium hydroxide? Can ethanol react with sodium hydroxide? Okay, is ethanol a strong or weak acid? Ethanol, no, you wouldn't be able to drink it. It would burn or it would eat up your tongue. I'm sorry, I'm not promoting anybody drinking, but I, it's just that it's it's just going to help you to it's going to help you to to remember when we say methanol is is toxic. It doesn't mean that methanol uh, methanol is um acidic methanol it doesn't affect anything your mouth it's going to affect your brain is going to cause coma is going to cause blindness and is going to because the nerve that is uh, responsible or the part of the brain that is responsible for your vision 
it would be first damaged by product of methanol in your body. But that has nothing to do with acidic or basicity of the methanol. Both methanol and ethanol, they are very weak acids because the pKa for ethanol and methanol, you saw in previous slide that they are just like water. Water is not acidic compound. The pKa for the for ethanol, it was 15, even less than water or less acidic than 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 water. So ethanol is a weak acid, very weak acid. What about sodium hydroxide? Sodium hydroxide is it weak, a strong base? Okay. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. I agree with that. But is it super strong base? No. Is it a strong strong base? No. Yes, you're right. Uh, I got that part. So sodium hydroxide is a strong base, but is not super strong base. If your acid is very weak, like ethanol, you have to bring a super strong. So this is going to be no reaction. Why no reaction? Because sodium hydroxide is not strong enough to react with ethanol. So what is the solution? The solution is to bring a stronger base than sodium hydroxide. What is a stronger base than sodium hydroxide is sodium itself. Sodium or potassium metal. Sodium or potassium metal is going to be much stronger base compared to sodium hydroxide. Now, if you bring sodium, which is the super strong base, please write down in your own word however you want to remember it. We, because ethanol is a very weak acid, we need super strong base to react with it to remove this hydrogen. And when you remove the hydrogen, you are going to end up with ethoxide. This is the alkoxide. This becomes an ionic compound. So you have sodium ethoxide. So ethoxide is the alkoxide that is remaining in general, but because you have two carbon, it's called ethoxide. So you get sodium ethoxide, hydrogen gas is released. So if you have alcohol, not phenol, you must use a strong, super strong base. Phenol is a stronger base compared to, much stronger base, much stronger base compared to the, is a stronger, I'm sorry, phenol is a strong acid, you're right, a stronger acid compared to cyclohexanol. And the comparison was the difference of pKa of 8. That means 800 million times, so the power of 8 is stronger than cyclohexanol. pKa for uh, phenol is 10, for water is 15. So is much stronger acid compared to water also. So phenol is acidic. So what would be the reaction of phenol? Would it react? Would phenol react with sodium hydroxide? Because phenol is a strong acid, is going to react with sodium hydroxide. And is going to give ionic compound, sodium phenoxide. Cyclohexanol, what would be the reaction of cyclohexanol with sodium hydroxide? No reaction. No reaction because this is not strong enough 
for sodium hydroxide to react with it, so it's not strong enough, then there would be no reaction. But sodium metal is going to react because it's a super strong base. It can react with this, and it gives you O and A. Okay. One, which we have it also here, one was phenol, that is the pKa10, that means is a stronger acid compared to cyclohexanol. Cyclohexanol is a very weak acid, and because it's very weak acid, you have to bring super strong base. So your super strong base is going to be sodium metal. It's not going to react with sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong, uh, strong base, but is not as strong as sodium itself, because phenol is a stronger base, a stronger acid. It can react with sodium hydroxide, so you would get the sodium phenoxide as a product. This diagram here it shows why phenol is a stronger acid, because if phenol loses hydrogen it can form four resonance. It's going to stabilize the conjugate base. So the safe and, and stable conjugate base is coming from a stronger acid. Okay. Questions? So we looked at the properties for properties for alcohol. Um, they have high boiling point because of hydrogen bonding. They are soluble in water unless they have too many carbons. If it's too many carbon and your carbon chain is uh, is long, then is because it's nonpolar, then it's going to uh, is not going to dissolve in water. So solubility decreases as the carbon chain, the size of carbon chain, um, increases. Acidity of alcohols. Alcohols are not acidic. Um, they are acidity is just like water. Um, but phenol, which is the aromatic alcohol, is acidic is more acidic than the regular alcohols. So we talked about acidity, solubility, and boiling point for alcohols. The more OH bonds you have, is going to make it more. Uh, is going to make it more soluble in water, more polar. Okay, what is next? We talked about the functional group structure of the alcohol. We talked about nomenclature. We talked about physical property. What comes next? We still have two more aspects. Mechanisms, that, that means reactions. Reactions of alcohols. Reactions of alcohols, yes, there is one reactions of alcohols. And what else? That's one, reactions of alcohols. And the other one is? What's the next method? The, the next concept. I keep repeating this four because when you study, no, elimination, elimination is not a topic that we are talking for every mo every class. For every class of organic molecules, uh, we talked about physical property, functional groups, and structure, physical property. So structure, how, what are the, for the, so that's one which depends on the hybridization and the functional group. Talk about physical property, which comes from intermolecular forces. We, talk, we talk about chemical reactions. There is one more.
how do we prepare these compounds? Okay, need to prepare these compounds as well. So how do we prepare these compounds? Okay, so elimination is one of the actually elimination would be one of the reactions. If you do dehydration, would be one of the reactions of of the um, alcohols. So now it's time to prepare alcohols. How do we prepare alcohols? You have learned few methods, and I want you to tell me the name of the reaction, and I can write the example for you. Can you give me one reaction that can prove the product is alcohol? Water produces alcohol. Water plus what? You're adding water to what? You have to add water to something to produce alcohol. What is that you're adding? water to, to produce alcohol. And that reaction has a name, and the name of the reaction is called hydration. But hydration of what? Acid catalyzed reactions of what? Alkoxy mercuration, demercuration of what? Produces alcohol. You are getting very close, but you're not just telling me what is your reactant. Your reactant is going to be alkene. Okay. So you have, when you have alkene and you do hydration. So this is one method. Acid catalyzed hydration. Okay. Or direct hydration. This is called direct hydration. That's one method for preparation of alcohol. What would be the product? What is the addition here? Markonikov or anti-Markonikov? The addition is going to be Markonikov addition. That means OH is going to be added to carbon 2 and H is going to be added to carbon 1. Because you get carbocation intermediate, then syn and anti-addition, both of them can form actually you can take place both sin and anti-addition can take place and, but it is markonikov addition two what's the next method that you can prepare alcohol do you want to give me the next method again so the first one was acid catalyzed hydration. So please, when you say acid catalyzed reaction, you have to complete that sentence or the statement. You say acid catalyzed hydration of alkene that would give alcohol. Next is going to be alkoxy mercuration, demercuration of alkene. Alkoxy mercuration. So you have to start with alkene, then you do alkoxy mercuration, demercuration. What is the reagent for alkoxy mercuration, demercuration? And step two. Sodium borohydrate, very good. So you have alkoxy mercuration, demercuration, two steps, two step reaction. What type of product do you have here? Markonikov or anti Markonikov? The product is going to be Markonikov product. 
And the addition, is it sin addition or anti addition? The addition is a anti addition because you get a triangle here, right? Three, what other methods you know to prepare alcohol? So that's the two reactions that you have learned so far before, you knew before. At least I hope. And I'm sure you, you have reviewed those reactions already. It's just that I'm using the terms today, trying to prepare you uh, to talk about it on like daily conversation. Uh, if you were trying to tell a story, uh, like how to make brownies, now you can say how to make, like, you cannot say how to make brownies like to someone without getting the, the brownie mix, right? You can't just say, just add eggs and add water, or you can replace the water with milk, and then you bake it. That's not going to give you brownie. You have to have the brownie mix first in order to add what you need to add to, to bake it. So, like, by end of the semester, I know it's too, much, too many information, but I kind of am covering very slow, and I make sure that anybody who has questions, I answer those questions. But what I expect from you uh, to stop being stressed out about the reactions on the paper. It should come to your mind. It should be part of your brain, part of your thinking now. Like how I can make alcohol is a very interesting topic. How can you make alcohol? You can start with alkene. That's the brownie mix. If you don't have that, you're not going to make brownies. Start with alkene and add acid catalyzed water additional water. So you add water, but you have to have a catalyst of, of acid in order to start the reaction because water is not a good electrophile. Uh, so second step, oxymercuration, demercuration. Oxymercuration, demercuration is going to give you alcohol. And this is not alkoxymercuration. Just make sure that it's OK. Oximercuration, demercuration. Alkoximercuration, demercuration is going to give you ether. Very similar reaction because instead of H2O, then you would have a uh, alcohol here. So it's oximercuration, demercuration. How is the product is going to look like? The product is going to be Marconic of addition, and addition is anti addition. If someone asks you, like, why? Why do you have to bake it at 250? Why do you have to bake it at 350? Then you would say, because you don't want to burn the bottom and the top is not something, right? Not cooked. Or you don't want the liquid inside. So everything has to be solid um, and the timing. So you, then you can explain this. Because you have a triangle as the intermediate is restricted. So the, the other unit is going to come from opposite way so this is the anti addition third method to make alcohol how can i make primary alcohol what's the name of the reaction i have to use aldehyde okay very good for, uh, for aldehyde i can do aldehyde and reduce aldehyde uh, so if I reduce aldehyde, that is going to be a next method, but I'm not going to use, uh, you know, fill in the third, because for third, of okay, I'm still working for something hydration, but is indirect hydration. What else I can do? If I have aldehyde, if I reduce it using reducing agent, I can change that to alcohol. Ketone. Ketone will give me secondary alcohol reduction, but it's not starting from, I'm starting from alkene. How can I make alcohol again to start with alkene? So if you have ketone and you use sodium borohydride, It will give you secondary alcohol. No. 
I'm trying to make alcohol. HBr is going to make alkyl halide. And please make sure to use your R as a lowercase for HBr. Okay. What's the next method? How are you going to take the quiz then if you don't know the method today? anti of addition of water. What's the reagent for anti of addition of water? And the addition actually is a syn addition. Hydroboration, oxidation. Hydroboration, oxidation. BH3, THF. H2O2, OH minus, what else? One and two. This is called hydroboration oxidation. So these are methods that you have learned as addition hydration these three are hydration hydration of alkene that gives you alcohol marconic of addition or anti-marconic of addition is going to give you alcohol okay i'm going to stop now so you can take the quiz during the class time and also review the chapters, chapter 9. You had other methods for preparation of alcohol. The names are given here, but you need to know the reactions. Okay, Hydroboration oxidation, oxymercuration demercuration, and acid catalyzed. That's just the preparation of the alcohol. It can be prepared by substitution reaction from alkyl halide. Substitution reaction, if you have uh, alkyl bromide, you mix it with water, it changes to, it's going to do solvolysis, go through solvolysis and changes to alcohol. So this is from chapter 6, and this is from chapter 8. Now, aldehydes would be primary, ketone would be secondary. Aldehyde would produce primary and ketone would produce secondary alcohol. Any questions? We're going to start with preparation of the diols. And for diols also, we want to know if the OHs are added to the same side, to the opposite side, and it's going to make the difference and have to make the... This is also a review, but make sure that's coming from Chapter 9. But by the time you we continue this, you've taken Chapter. I had the quiz open for one hour because I was expecting everybody to attend the class and take the quiz during the class time. You should finish it in half an hour or to 15 minutes, but starting at 9.30. OK, any questions? Last minute question. I'm going to stop the recording. So anybody who wants to leave the session, go to Take the quiz, it's fine. No, it's not open all day. <laughs>